anything like me, at some point on one of your photographic adventures, you've come across a scene or a subject that cried out to be captured as a panorama. And it's probably at this stage that you're asking yourself, what's the easiest way to take multiple images and piece them together into a panoramic image using Photoshop? Well, the answer to that question is photo merge. Photo merge makes it incredibly easy to stitch multiple images together to create a panorama from scratch. And the best part is that Adobe Photoshop CS5 does an amazing job that I honestly can't fault, which can't be said for the older versions of the software. In fact, it does such a great job that you almost never need to actually position your lens directly over its nodal point, and that is pretty impressive. Now the process of actually capturing and creating a panorama is fairly straightforward as you're about to find out. I've decided to demonstrate the process using two images to keep things simple and easy to follow, but you can essentially create a panoramic image using as many images as you like, and in a future tutorial I'll actually put a panorama together that has about six, seven or eight images, so that's, that'll also be interesting to watch for you. Now first off, in order to actually get started, what you need to do is actually capture multiple images of a scene using a tripod. Uh, you can do it handheld, but obviously a tripod's gonna give you better results uh, in the long run. And just make sure that all of your images actually overlap evenly and uh, are actually photographed using the same exposure settings. So this will limit the amount of editing that you actually need to do when you actually get it into Camera Raw. So obviously the next stage is to open everything up in Camera Raw and just make sure that everything's identical. Now it can be difficult if you're shooting quite a few images and you're shooting around sunset or sunrise where the, the difference in lighting actually changes uh, you know, fairly quickly. So you may need to adjust the density slightly uh, throughout you know, the actual series of images. Uh, in some cases, it may be a third of a stop or two thirds of a stop. It just really depends on you know, how quickly you get those shots off and actually get them set up and taken. So once you've actually opened them up in Camera Raw, processed them all, done all the same sort of editing adjustments to all the photographs so they all look consistent and identical, the next thing you want to do is essentially save your images at the same resolution uh, using the same color profile or color working space and then also using the same file format just to ensure consistency. Now from here, we're actually going to get the photos into Photoshop. So as you can see, I've already got two images open directly into Photoshop. Now where you actually find Photo Merge is it's actually located in the main navigational menu underneath File. And we just scroll down to Automate. And you'll find Photo Merge located as the last option in this drop down menu. So we'll just click on that. Now the first thing you'll notice when you actually open up Photo Merge is that you have a couple of different options and settings from which you need to actually choose. The first being is actually your source files. So at the moment I have my two source files open currently, but if you don't you can actually choose to browse for them, or uh, if your files are open like mine are, you can actually just go and specify uh, add open files just here. So now it's added the two files that I already have opened. The next thing you essentially need to do is specify uh, whether you want to blend all your images together. In most cases, uh, I suggest yes, you obviously want to do that. Um, you can also choose to actually remove uh, any vignetting from your images or any geometric distortion correction or any geometric distortion from your images as well, just by checking these little check boxes. In most cases, I just leave the blend images together checked and I leave these unchecked. It just depends on the quality of your images and the type of lens that you're actually using. And finally, what we need to do is actually specify a particular layout. Now the default will be set to auto and is what you'll probably primarily utilize most of the time. But if you happen to actually know the type of panorama that you've shot and actually, you know, the type of lens that you shot it with, then you can actually choose to determine, you know, whether you want to utilize the perspective adjustment or the, or any of these other adjustments 
uh, in relation to that. Uh, one in particular that you may like to use is if you're ever doing any photo restoration, you're scanning photos on a flatbed scanner for instance, you can come down here to use uh, reposition, so you'll actually just reposition the multiple scans directly over each other because they're actually just scan on a flatbed. So that's something else that you may choose to utilize. But in most cases, when you're shooting a panorama, you're primarily going to use the auto setting. And from here, it's just a case of actually clicking OK, and then letting Photoshop go ahead and actually create the panorama for you, uh, which is primarily what it's doing at the moment. So now that that's actually gone ahead and actually created the panorama, let's take a look at it. We'll just change our workspace back to one image. And as you can see, it's really sort of stretched things out uh, a little bit, especially with this left hand image here. But it's done a fantastic job of actually stitching together the two images. And you can't actually notice where they're at, they've actually been stitched in, in relation to the, the separations. And you'll notice here that they actually store them as two layers. And this is this is quite good because if you want to change things you can and you'll see that they have two uh, uh, layer masks essentially so if I uncheck one you'll notice it's actually made the, the actual correction right along these lines for where it's actually going to actually separate the two images so it's done a really good job now in some cases when you're actually doing this type of um, panoramic photography what you'll find is like what I've found here where I've got these big gaps up the top here where there's actually no information so you actually have the choice of cropping using either the marquee tool or the crop tool to actually come and actually uh, let's use the marquee tool for instance to, to actually crop your image you can choose to just crop it based on where it's currently at at the moment so for example it would be sitting somewhere like that for the image overall or you can choose to actually uh, use something like content aware fill where you'd actually get it to fill in these areas for you and then you can go ahead and actually make some slight adjustments using say the clone stamp or the you know spot healing brush tool in order just to extend some of these areas obviously with the sky it would be relatively easy to extend that up and onwards um, but for some of these bottom areas here they're going to be a little bit awkward and you'll need to actually do some fine tuning in order to get them to a place where you're happy with to actually be able to include them in your full image. So as you've seen creating a panoramic image inside of Photoshop using multiple images is relatively straightforward and especially with the array of photographic opportunities that present themselves with this type of photography are essentially endless. So you really want to take the time to play around with photo merch and just experiment with the types of panoramas that you can create because at the end of the day it does add another feature set to your own style of photography.